the thing we observe is how the universe is expanding and how that expansion rate is changing and how it's, ex how it's changed over time. So we notice that the universe's expansion rate is increasing, which is exactly the opposite of what we thought. These are fundamental and difficult problems, and we're talking about the origin and evolution of the universe. In the vast expanse of the universe, there's a fundamental puzzle that astronomers have been trying to unravel, the Hubble constant. It's like a cosmic speed limit sign that tells us how fast the universe is expanding. This constant is crucial for understanding how our universe evolved and what its ultimate fate might be. But here's the twist. There's something called the Hubble tension. It's a persistent difference between the value of the Hubble constant measured using various methods and the value predicted based on the Big Bang's afterglow. Enter NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, a powerful tool that's helping us take a closer look at this cosmic puzzle. The James Webb Telescope is a $10 billion endeavor, an endeavor that has eaten into NASA's limited budget, consuming one quarter of NASA's entire astronomy budget for years. Adam Rees, a Nobel laureate from Johns Hopkins University and the Space Telescope Science Institute, has been leading a team of researchers using Webb's observations to improve our understanding of the Hubble constant. Imagine trying to read a sign that's at the edge of your vision. It's a bit blurry and hard to decipher. Well, that's what astronomers face when they try to read this cosmic sign. The sign they're interested in is written in the stars of distant galaxies. Uh, first, uh, we're looking for uh... Uh, stars or, or stellar objects or things that are approximately going to be a nanojansky. And to explain what a nanojansky is, is units of bright, a unit of brightness. It's very, very dim. We're looking for the among the dimmest things there are in the sky. You see, the brightness of certain stars in those galaxies gives us clues about how far away they are. And when we know their distance, we can figure out how much time their light has been traveling through space to reach us. But that's not all. The redshifts of these galaxies also tell us how much the universe has expanded during that journey. It's like looking at a cosmic roadmap. So the Hubble constant is all about connecting these dots, the distance of stars, the time their light has traveled and the expansion of the universe. It's like trying to read the story of the cosmos by studying the stars in distant galaxies. With the James Webb Space Telescope's advanced capabilities, scientists like Adam Rees are working to refine our measurements of this crucial cosmic constant. They're peering into the depths of the universe, trying to decode the signs written in the stars, and hopefully getting us closer to understanding the secrets of our ever-expanding universe. You need to know that the Milky Way galaxy has got 200 billion stars. Most of those stars now we know have planetary systems. We estimate there are something like 20 billion Earth-like planets, or potentially Earth-like planets, in the Milky Way galaxy alone. In the vast cosmos, there's a group of stars called Cepheid variables that have played a crucial role in helping astronomers measure vast distances for more than a century. These stars are no ordinary stars. They're supergiants, shining with a brilliance a hundred thousand times that of our Sun. What's even more remarkable is that they pulsate, they expand and contract in size over weeks, which tells us how bright they truly are. The longer the pulsation period, the brighter they are. Cepheids have become the gold standard for measuring distances to galaxies that are incredibly far away, sometimes over a hundred million light years distant. This is a vital step in figuring out the Hubble constant, which tells us how fast our universe is expanding. However, there's a challenge when it comes to observing these Cepheid stars in galaxies so far away. When we look at these galaxies from our distant vantage point, the stars are packed closely together making it difficult to distinguish them from their neighboring stars. This crowded view blurs our ability to measure them accurately. This problem prompted the construction of the Hubble Space Telescope, which was launched into space in 1990. Hubble had a unique advantage. It could observe invisible wavelengths without the blurring effects of Earth's atmosphere, allowing it to identify individual Cepheid stars in galaxies far, far away. This was a significant breakthrough because it helped refine our understanding of the universe's expansion rate. As this cosmic soup of atomic particles began to cool down, hydrogen atoms began to form, leading to the universe's first bright, violent new stars, burning through the fog that once blocked all light from escaping the expanding universe. But there was a catch. 
To see clearly through the cosmic dust that sometimes obscures our view, we needed to observe Cepheids in the near-infrared part of the spectrum. Unfortunately, Hubble's vision in the red part of the spectrum wasn't as sharp as in the blue, resulting in some blending of starlight from neighboring stars. Astronomers had to use statistical methods to account for this blending, but it introduced some uncertainty into the measurements. This is where the James Webb Space Telescope comes into the picture. Webb has a superpower, its sharp infrared vision. With its large mirror and sensitive optics, it can easily separate the light from cepheid stars from the light of nearby stars with minimal blending. In its first year of operation, Webb observed more than 320 cepheid stars across two crucial steps in what scientists call the Cosmic Distance Ladder. The first step involves observing cepheids in a galaxy with a known geometric distance, which allows astronomers to calibrate the true luminosity of cepheids. In this case, the galaxy NGC 4258 plays a vital role. The second step is observing cepheids in the host galaxies of recent type supernova, helping calibrate the true luminosities of these supernovae. The third step is to observe these supernovae in distant regions of the universe where we can measure the expansion by comparing their brightness and the redshifts of their host galaxies. Webb's observations have brought a tremendous improvement by reducing the noise in the Cepheid measurements due to its impressive resolution in near-infrared wavelengths. This is a game-changer for astronomers, a dream come true. These observations have not only confirmed the accuracy of earlier measurements by Hubble, but have also opened new doors for understanding the cosmos and the mysteries of its expansion. It's like uncovering hidden secrets of the universe, one star at a time. One point is that it's um, expanding, and, and we always see the same radiation out there, so the glow of the Big Bang. But there are some deeper reasons. Um, the one uh, from the theory of inflation. As astronomers continue to peer into the vastness of the universe, they find themselves faced with a perplexing mystery. Why is the universe expanding so rapidly? They've developed a method to predict how fast the universe should be expanding today based on its early days, as captured in the cosmic microwave background, and their best models of its growth over time. However, there's a puzzling discrepancy. The rate at which the universe is actually expanding, as measured today, significantly exceeds what these predictions suggest. This long-standing puzzle is known as the Hubble tension. This tension has kept scientists on their toes for over a decade, and it has them scratching their heads. They're pondering whether this might be a clue that there's something crucial they're missing in their understanding of the cosmos. It could be a sign of exotic dark energy, or exotic dark matter, a need to revise their understanding of gravity, or perhaps the presence of a unique particle or field that they haven't yet encountered. On the other hand, there's a more mundane possibility that multiple measurement errors are somehow conspiring to give the same misleading result. Scientists have diligently ruled out the possibility of a single error by cross-checking their measurements through independent methods. This is why redoing these measurements with even greater precision is of utmost importance. The combination of technologies required to make the James Webb Telescope possible are unique to this time period in human history. Now here's where the James Webb Space Telescope comes into play. Webb's confirmation of the measurements obtained by the Hubble Space Telescope provides some of the strongest evidence yet that systematic errors in Hubble's measurements of Cepheid star's brightness do not significantly contribute to the Hubble tension. This means that the more intriguing possibilities, like exotic dark energy or other cosmic mysteries, remain on the table, deepening the enigma of the Hubble tension. So as astronomers continue to delve into the universe's secrets, they are on the verge of a breakthrough, inching closer to understanding why our cosmos seems to be in such a hurry to expand. It's a cosmic puzzle that keeps them on the edge of their seats, waiting to uncover the next layer of the universe's mysteries.